All right, YouTube, today we're taking a look at a Wheatstone bridge, which is made up of four different resistors, and then a bridge in this case, which is actually made up of an ammeter. And what we're gonna do today is solve for the resistance in this variable resistor, such that there will be no current through the ammeter. Now you'll typically see a problem like this when you first start looking at Wheatstone bridges and the purpose behind this and the usefulness of this bridge is, is a little bit lost to most people at the beginning because it's, it's hard to see. You need to work out quite a few different Wheatstone bridges before you recognize the usefulness of this type of circuit. But today we're just going to go through and work out the required value for this resistor so that the two sides are what we'd say are balanced or they're ultimately allowing no current to flow from one side of the circuit to the other. Now as soon as some people start talking about Wheatstone bridges, they like to start diving into the loop rule and the junction rule. I don't want to get into any of that today. I just want to apply Ohm's law to this and some good old fashioned logic to come up with this value for this variable resistor. Now, to start, what I want to do is go through and label these corners. See, each of these four points is at a different position around the Wheatstone bridge, and they're also at different potentials. And this is going to allow us to help apply some logic to Ohm's law so that we can start analyzing mathematically what's going on here. Now, the first important thing we need to recognize is that an ammeter has no resistance. It is effectively just a wire connecting two points. And so if this wire is connecting the left side of this bridge at point B to the right side at point C, immediately we know that the voltage at those two points is going to be the same. Now, regardless of the voltage coming out of the battery, there's going to be some potential as the charge or current travels through this wire to point A. Now, regardless of whether the current travels through resistor 1 or resistor 2, we know it's going to go from whatever the voltage was at the battery and at point A down to whatever the potential is at this, this wire connecting B to C. And ultimately what that means is the voltage drop across R1 is the same as the voltage drop across R2. Now whether the charge goes to the left or to the right, if it loses a certain amount of potential in going through R1, it's going to lose the rest in going through R3. And if it loses a certain potential in going through R2, it's going to also lose the rest in going through our mystery resistor here. Ultimately, that means that R3 and R4, they have to have the same potential across them. And you'll notice all we're doing is setting up a system of equations here. So now we're going to apply Ohm's law to each of these resistors in order to expand out these equalities. So applying Ohm's law to resistor 1 and then resistor 2 and doing the same thing down here. So now we've expanded our system of equations and it may appear as though things are becoming worse or more confusing, but there's a way we can reduce all this down. See, looking over here, any current or charge that passes through R1 it's going to have to go through R3 because we don't have any current passing through this wire or this bridge. So every bit of current through R1 is going to pass through R3, meaning there's some certain current around the left side of this Wheatstone bridge. And the similar logic is applied to the right. There's going to be the same current through R2 as there is through our unknown resistor. So rather than referring to these currents as I1, I2, I3, and our unknown, we're simply going to call them the current through the left and the current through the right. Now rearranging this equation for the current through the right side. We have an equation which we can substitute in right here. And you'll notice now the current on the left side cancels out. Ultimately, we've gotten rid of all of our currents, and now we simply have an expression relating our four values of resistance to one another. Now, there's several different ways we can rearrange this equation. The first way to do that is to relate the resistors on the left side to the resistors on the right. And this equality is specific to what we call a balanced Wheatstone bridge. And that is the situation where points B and C are at the same potential such that we get no current flow across the bridge. 
The other way to rearrange this equation is to actually rearrange it for what we were originally looking for, and that is our unknown resistor. And this will allow us to solve for the required value of resistance in this one resistor such that the entire system or bridge is balanced. Now there's quite a few different variations on a Wheatstone bridge, so stick around and I'll show you what happens when we do something like put a voltmeter in here and create unbalanced situations or conditions within a Wheatstone bridge. But on that note, that's all for now.